gift of music with us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Three Willows United Church. Uh, warm welcome to all those gathered here in the sanctuary. How good it is to be back in the sanctuary for worship. And a special welcome to those who will be uh, watching and uh, worshiping with us on the recorded version uh, that gets posted a little bit later on. Uh, wherever you are, it is good to be together and to be part of this community of faith as we gather to worship God. My name is Andrew Hyde, and I use he, him pronouns. I serve as the ecumenical campus minister at the University of Guelph, and it's a real treat when I get to come and lead worship here at Three Willows, and uh, we'll be doing so for the next couple of Sundays together. As we begin our worship today, there's uh, lots going on, but we want to pause uh, right at the beginning of our worship uh, to take a moment and root ourselves in the land where we find ourselves, uh, and to give God thanks for the land on which we worship today. Uh, for those of us here in Guelph, we pay particular homage to the Atawanran, the Anishinaabe, and the Mississaugas of the Credit for their stewardship of this land, and we long to walk in better ways into right relationship with all our Indigenous, uh, Métis, First Nation, and Inuit neighbors. Uh, I understand today is Inuit uh, Heritage Day uh, here in Canada too, so uh, an opportunity to learn more and to uh, obviously give thanks for those who have taken care of this land for centuries. Before we light our Christ candle, I want to uh, check in with the group that's gathered here. Uh, if there are any joys or celebrations we want to share or announcements to make, right up here, uh, Anna Beth. Right? Yes, thank you. Yes, um, we had a special birthday in our family this week. Um, my sister um, turned, I shouldn't say, but <laughs> <laughs> 75. Yes, yeah, so um, that, that was a wonderful celebration for her. Wonderful. What do you do for a 75th birthday party? Well, what we did because of uh, COVID, um, my sister and my brother and I came over early to the church in the morning, brought Jane coffee, yeah. and uh, we had a little visit with some cards and gifts. And then later on, some of the other um, Church friends came by and uh, brought chin bits and had a little celebration. So Great. that's the best we could do under these uh, circumstances. Hey, it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's a happy birthday. Wonderful. Any other news or celebrations, uh, things we're celebrating today? As part of our worship today, we're going to be looking forward uh, a little bit further later on in the week uh, is Remembrance Day. And so we're going to be uh, engaging in an act of remembrance as part of our worship today. Uh, but we also recognize that on May 11th there will be lots of festivities around town, uh, acts of, uh, of remembrance throughout our community and stuff too. So we think of all those who are uh, preparing for those. One of our students uh, connected with our campus ministry will be playing the last call the, uh, uh, on the trumpet for the university celebration. So uh, thinking of all those for whom that's a really significant day uh, and part of uh, I want to make a quick announcement, uh, you're probably familiar with this, but there is bread uh, available in the uh, narthex of back area here of the church. Uh, if you would like to take home a loaf, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, give thanks to Cobb's Bread for their uh, faithfulness in providing that for our community and stuff. Uh, and I also want to lift up the work they do. Uh, my wife works at a high school and Cobb's gives uh, food to their breakfast program as well. So. Uh, we give thanks for all the partners in the community that uh, are so generous with their, their uh, businesses as well. Uh, we'll also be celebrating communion today, and so I'm hopeful if you are here in the sanctuary that you were able to pick up one of your little handy communion kits. This is a COVID measure that we're doing uh, for uh, celebrating communion together, uh, and you will need that little communion kit. Uh, it's all kind of neatly wrapped up and uh, everything here ready for us for when we want to use. Uh, if you are uh, watching from home, I just invite you to grab something of bread and something of juice and to have that ready for when we come to the part of our service where we celebrate communion together. So uh, we're getting things ready and making sure we have everything we need. Uh, 
I'm going to light our Christ candle this morning. It's a way that we signify to those present here, but also uh, those watching at home, that Christ is the light of the world and is present to us when we worship uh, and is showing us the way forward, the way to walk as disciples of Christ. So we give thanks for God's presence among us and the light by which we see ourselves and the world. The light of Christ.
purify our hearts so that our worship of you this day might bring you joy. We seek your face today, O God. Grant that we might know your truth. You are our King of glory. So meet us here in this place this day. It's great to see so many among us today wearing our copies, and obviously as the 11th gets a little bit closer, we think more and more of uh, those who sacrificed so that we might uh, live in freedom and peace that we enjoy as part of our communities. I'm going to enter into a little time of uh, remembrance, uh, a way that we can uh, lift up and give thanks to God uh, and recognize um, the privilege that it is to be part of the communities that we are a part of. Knowing that we can always work and sacrifice ourselves to make them better and fairer places, the kind of places that uh, you would give your life for uh, to serve others. So our act of remembrance today is going to include a couple parts. Uh, I'm going to begin with a prayer, and then I'm going to leave a time of silence, and invite you in that time of silence to maybe think about your own connections uh, to those who have served our communities, uh, maybe loved ones who uh, served in our armed forces, or those who have served overseas, or those who have uh, held the home front in those critical times. And we think too about uh, the critical times that each day is for us. Somewhere in the world, someone is affected by war and strife to this day. So maybe we think of our commitments to making the whole world, uh, not just the corner we live in, uh, but the whole world, a more fairer and just reflection of God's hopes. So I'll pray, we'll leave some silence, and then I'll end with a couple of comments. So let us pray. We lift our hearts in thanksgiving to you, O God, for the lives of our veterans and their families, for all who have given their lives for liberty and justice, for all who return from the horrors of war, and all who served on our own home shores, for all who stayed behind and waited, wrote letters, and prayed, and all who worked to heal physical, mental, and spiritual wounds caused by war. We lift our hearts in thanksgiving to you, O God, for the lives of our veterans and their families. Help us to remember, lest we forget their sacrifice. Grant us your peace in this life and the next. Amen. shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Amen. Sue to come up. 
come up and offer our scripture reading today. Sue, so why don't you come up here, because this is where the microphone is. Thanks. Our scripture reading this morning is from John chapter 11, verses 32 to 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus! Come forth. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the beginning of okay. Thank you, Sue, for that reading today. Well, welcome to November, everyone. This is the first Sunday of November. And I don't know about you, but my heart always sinks a little bit when November rolls around. The first month or so of autumn always feels so radiant and glorious and bright. There's pumpkin spice filling the air everywhere you go. There are sunny fall fairs that dot the calendar, which are the focal point for my family going back to our agricultural roots. There's always a lot of fun and beauty and warmth at the first half of autumn. But by November, things turn a little cold and wet and damp and clammy, don't they? The trees begin to look a little more bare. The wind blows a little cold. The skies become cloudy and gray and forlorn. The clocks change and the days grow shorter. And we can feel in the rhythms of all creation a slight turn towards winter and stillness, maybe even death, each time November rolls around. Of course, God is laughing at me today because it's such a beautiful day to be present. <laughs> I was thinking about this on one of those great days earlier this week, but it's coming. Our Gospel reading today feels a little bit like a November story to me. It's the story of the death of Jesus' friend, Lazarus. When we begin reading the story a little earlier in the 11th chapter of John, we come alongside Jesus as he is teaching in the rural regions just east of the Jordan. There, he receives word from Mary and Martha, Lazarus's sisters, that their brother is sick. Lazarus is dying. They are concerned, and they long for Jesus to be with them, to come to their aid, to restore Lazarus, just as Jesus has restored sight to the blind 
and healed so many in his journeys. But the interesting thing about our story that we read today, the interesting thing is that Jesus delays. Jesus waits two extra days before even beginning the long journey towards Bethany, where Lazarus and his sisters await. By the time Jesus arrives, some days later, it is already too late. Lazarus is dead. The funeral has already taken place. The body has been interred into a tomb. The community has gathered to comfort the grieving sisters. Because of Jesus' delay, because of his absence and hesitation, the scene around Lazarus' death feels remarkably Novemberish. There's a chill in the air as people begin pointing fingers and asking their what ifs. Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died, accuses a grieving sister. Couldn't he who opened the eyes of the blind man, couldn't he have saved this man from dying as well? Asks the Jewish mourners. Jesus feels their sadness. He's affected by the grief of the community over their friend and brother Lazarus. He weeps alongside them, just as he weeps with us whenever we enter into our November seasons of loss. The challenging truth of the matter is that Jesus let his good friend Lazarus die. Not because of malice, or because of hard-heartedness or uncare. He let his good friend Lazarus die so that the community might experience resurrection. That he might get a taste of the coming kingdom of God, a reign of God where sickness want and death will be no more. The raising of Lazarus, with all of its drama and pizzazz, is not about holding tightly to what is familiar about the past, but about embracing a new spiritual reality where abundant life cannot be contained by the powers of sin or death. The death and resurrection of Lazarus foreshadows the Holy Week trajectory of Jesus himself, and it reminds us that our own November moments are but a prelude to a glorious spring that awaits whenever we put our trust in Jesus. And so a good question we might ask, in light of this story of Jesus and his friend Lazarus, is what are the things we need to let die in order to experience resurrection in our own lives and the life of our community? Perhaps, perhaps we need to let some of our assumptions about sustainable prosperity and economic growth, maybe we need to let some of them die. We're beginning to see the effects that unbridled capitalism is having on our planet, on the young and on the poor. The idea that each new generation will be automatically better off than its parents, that idea is proving itself untenable and untrue given our current systems. We need to be resurrected to new ways of distributing the world's resources and wealth, ways that protect the planet and safeguard future generations. And perhaps, perhaps we need to let some of our nostalgia and understandings of what makes a community feel safe and comfortable, maybe we need to let some of them die as well. Our communities are more diverse and multilingual and intercultural than they've ever been. And where we once felt safe and secure because of our commonalities and our shared narratives and assumptions, we 
we now need to find new ways to celebrate diversity, to work harder at getting to know our neighbors. We need to be resurrected to new ways of loving our neighbors, new ways of being community with one another across diversity. And perhaps, perhaps we need to let some of our expectations about the church itself, about how it looks and operates and functions in this post-pandemic emerging landscape. We need to let some of our expectations about the church die as well. Maybe the church moving forward won't be able to rely on Sunday morning to be the main focal point of our communities, but instead will be more of a patchwork of virtual and in-person engagements. Maybe the church moving forward won't have full-time professional clergy to provide leadership, but will instead be a movement of lay people contributing their various gifts for the common good. Maybe worship will look different. Maybe our spaces will change. Who knows how the Spirit might be calling us and shaping us as a church in the years and the decades to come. We need to be resurrected to new ways of being the church. And we will never get there if we won't let a few things die. Letting things die can be painful and difficult work. Jesus was moved to tears by the loss of his friend Lazarus. November, we know, can be a really difficult month for so many of us as creation turns towards winter. There can be real grief and sadness as we say goodbye to the people and to the patterns that we have loved for so long. But the only way to experience resurrection, the only way to live into the new and abundant life that our faith promises to us, is through our experiences of death and letting go. There is no Easter Sunday we've heard so many times without the experience of Good Friday. There is no glorious spring without the sad, dreary days of November. The good news is that God attends to us in each and every season of life. God knows our grief and our hesitancy, and that God is still transforming us into something new as we place our trust in God's divine call. Unbind him and let him go. Jesus calls out to the world as Lazarus takes his first steps out of the grave and into new life. Unbind him and let him go. May the same God who called Lazarus back to life unbind us from our fears and give life to our steps as we walk in the way of Jesus towards resurrection ending life. Amen.
feel like I'm Austin Matthews after the hockey game or something. <laughs> <laughs> Big thank you to Ingrid for all the technical work you've been doing, for uh, you know the recordings and so forth. There's all these little things that we always you know have to think through a little bit every Sunday morning, right? Like where's the microphone go here and all these kind of things. So uh, we give thanks to Ingrid uh, particularly for the, the care she gives to uh, uh, all the tech aspects here that you are a gift to this community. So thank you for all the work you do. We want to take a second and uh, give some thought to our offerings and tithes this day. Uh, we know that uh, people are contributing to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada uh, and the work here of Three Willows and so many other great and wonderful causes uh, in lots of different ways. People are giving online and through their car offerings. Uh, if you came to worship today and would like to make your, uh, your offering as well, uh, we're not gathering our offerings uh, yet in this season, but I think there are some uh, uh, offering plates at the back if you make your, your contribution as you uh, head out. But as uh, we think about all of our offerings, I guess we can say a prayer of blessing over them. And so I would invite you to join me in prayer uh, and think about all the ways that people give back to our community further the mission of God in our world. So let us pray. God of new life, out of the abundance of our lives, we offer our gifts to you this day. Through your blessing and our willingness to share, may these offerings become a source for hope and love in this church family and in the community and world beyond. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We're going to enter into a time of communion. And as we often do, uh, just a reminder of uh, communion practice here in the United Church and at Three Billows is that we practice an open table, which means that all are welcome to celebrate communion. Uh, hopefully, if you're watching the recording at home, you've been able to find uh, the elements that you need. Uh, hopefully, everyone here has got their little communion kit uh, as well, uh, ready to go. Uh, we have our elements here, and they are an offering that, uh, that God makes to us. Sets the table for, uh, for us to remember Jesus' uh, saving grace in our lives. And so we come to this table, uh, recognizing that it is a symbol of God's abundance, uh, of God's kingdom uh, and where everyone will have enough and justice is being served. So let us enter into communion uh, together. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God for it is indeed good and right to give God our thanks and praise. A loving God, Source of all, we thank you and praise you with our lips and with our lives, that having created us and all things through your word, you welcome our prayer and praise. For the goodness of creation and the glory of redemption, we praise you. For the law of holiness, inviting our obedience. For the call of your prophets, rebuking our disobedience, we praise you as well. Therefore, with all that is seen and unseen, and with all the faithful of every time and every place, we join in a hymn of praise and thanksgiving as we say, Holy, holy, holy God, power of life and love. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna through the ages. Blessed is the one who comes bring your justice to earth. Loving God, Holy One, we offer you praise and thanksgiving over this bread and this cup. Because in Jesus Christ, your only Son, you have joined yourself forever to us, uniting heaven and earth. Now therefore, we gratefully remember Jesus' birth into our humanity, his baptism for our sin, 
compassion for our suffering, his intimacy with our frailty, his rebuke of our pride, his bearing of the cross with its death, and rising from the tomb by the power of God. On the night before he died, it was Jesus who took a loaf of bread, gave you thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat, whenever you do this, remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the new covenant, by it, remember me. And so, with our words and with our lives, we proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, both our judge and our hope. Loving God, creative power, blessing your name, we seek your spirit. Come to us and bless these gifts of bread and wine, that they might be for us the body and the blood of Christ, the sign and seal of our forgiveness in him and our adoption as children of God. As we eat and drink together, make us one with Christ and one in Christ, a sign of his eternal reign over all the world. And now, O oh God, receive the prayer that Jesus taught us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
we whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and all creation live to praise your holy name.
and give us the miracle of losing a little more of ourselves in serving you and our neighbors. Walk with us, O oh God, as we answer your call to be peacemakers. Increase our compassion, our generosity, and our hospitality for the least of your children. Give us the courage, the patience, the serenity, the self-honesty, and gentleness of spirit that are needed in a world filled with turmoil and war. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you. 